Okay, so today I'm going to be reacting to some, well, I wasn't expecting that, story prompts. Um, yeah, so let's just get right into it. You are the heir to the throne, and when you fall ill, your parents assign to you a personal healer. Eventually, you realize that your healer isn't treating you for your ailment. They're actively giving you substances that make it worse. The king and queen want their second born to rule, and their plan is to weaken you to the point of incompetence. If you can trick the healer long enough to grow strong again, you'll enact your plot to gain power under your parents' noses. Yikes. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know what to say about that. <laughs> A fantasy writer becomes a supporting character in their own story. Normally, they'd be overjoyed to meet their characters and explore the world they created. That would be fun. However, by the end of the book, the side character is killed by the antagonist. So I'm killed. With their knowledge of the plot, the writer should be able to avoid that fate. But with every action they take to shift the course of events, the antagonist is one step ahead of them, and they are still on the path leading to their death. Okay, this is weird. It almost feels as if the antagonist has advanced knowledge of the plot, too. I mean, yeah, it does seem that way. Plot twist. The antagonist is their editor. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I, it makes sense. It's just like, wow. So not only does the writer become a character in their own story, but their editor becomes a character in their own story. Like, this is weird. How does this happen? <laughs> How does this happen? I don't know. Up until a week ago, my fiancé was still alive. Up until an hour ago, I had never killed anyone. Funny how things work out. Okay. So. I would say that the fiancé killed their fiancé. But it's like up until a week ago, my fiance was still alive. And then up until an hour ago, I had never killed anyone. So it leads me to wonder, did the fiance kill their fiance's killer? I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah. You're a purse snatcher. That's an odd career to have. Um, one night as you're exiting a train, you choose to steal the purse of an older woman standing by the door. Now, why you got to do that? <sighs> you expect the woman to shout or maybe even attempt to run after you. But as you look back, you see the train start to pull away. The woman is standing looking at you through the window and a demonic smile appears on her face as she waves you goodbye. Something tells me there's something in that purse that you're not expecting. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. Um... Yeah, I mean, why you got to steal the purse of an older woman? I don't know. Like, but why you got to steal the purse of anybody? But like, especially an older woman, like. <sighs> but you know what? Joke's on you. Because something's in that purse. And it's going to get you. <laughs> Someone once broke up with me because they had a big crush on this random person at a party. Okay. And it made me realize they weren't uh, they weren't that attracted to me. I mean, yeah, that would be the assumption to make. I moved on, got married, and years later found out that I married the random person at the party. <laughs> oh, my ex didn't get them. My ex didn't get them cuz I did. <laughs> That's hilarious. A princess is arranged to marry a prince as a sign of peace. 
first of all, I don't think that's how you're supposed to spell peace in this context. But, alas, nonetheless. Problem is that the princess has been cursed with the ability to see ghosts and has fallen in love with the ghost of the true prince. As it turns out, the man she is supposed to marry is a fraud. Well, at least she can see the true prince and she's fallen in love with the true prince. I don't know how that's going to work out, a relationship between a human and a ghost. But, yeah. My question is, though, do the king and queen of this prince know that their actual son is dead and this guy is a fraud? Or do they truly believe that this guy is their son? Because... I feel like they have to know. Because... How would you think that this random dude is your son when you know what your son looks like? Um, but who knows? I hope it works out with the ghost of the prince and the princess, though. Because that sounds like true love. Weird. <laughs> The heroes confront you with the legendary mystical weapon that can defeat you. Yay. Unbeknownst to them, it's actually the one thing you needed to conquer the world. Hey, I get to conquer the world. You were having trouble finding it, so you started the legend of the weapon yourself to get some poor schmuck to find it for you. That is villain mastery. And I'm not mad at it. Hey, if I need something to conquer the world and I can't find it, send a note out on Twitter and Twitter will do its thing and find it for you. Yep. The amount of money your soulmate currently has appears over your head. That's odd, but okay. The number over your head has always been low. Like how low? Like one figure, two figures, three figures, four, five, six, seven. Actually, those are high figures. That's not it. That's not it. Um, then one day while sitting in your car... It suddenly shoots up and surpasses one million dollars. Okay. Seconds later, someone jumps into your car and yells, drive. Well, I think you found your soulmate. <laughs> um, your soulmate may not be a law-abiding citizen, but... You found them. So that's good. <laughs> I guess. Uh, the question is, is, do you drive? And if so, do you drive them to the police station? Or, because they're your soulmate, do you drive them to your house, their house? Where do you drive them to? Or do you just stay parked? I don't know. My soulmate's into some sketchy things. And uh, maybe I won't go for my soulmate. Maybe I'll find somebody else. Because my soulmate has questionable morals. <laughs> A female assassin kills her marks by seducing their wives and convincing them to murder their husbands. Y'all, I love this. This makes so much sense. Like, honestly, like, this this is masterful on so many levels. Like, you're a female assassin and you need to kill your mark. So, the way you do that is you seduce your mark's wives and convince them to murder their husbands. I don't know if you could technically call yourself an assassin if you're having other people kill for you. But 
It is the way to kill people without getting blood on your hands. Don't kill people. Public service announcement. Don't kill people. (laughs) And don't have people kill people for you. I feel like I shouldn't have to say that, but the world is the world. And I feel like we need to say that. A 17-year-old girl is suddenly taken to a magical world. I mean, I feel like as a kid that would be fun. I don't know about a 17-year-old. That feels less fun. I feel like by 17, you're more cynical. So, magical world. Okay. There she manages to slay a dragon, become a queen, get married, have kids, and eventually pass away decades later. This 17 year old girl did the most. (laughs) Only to wake up in her high school, young and in her uniform again, as if nothing happened. That sucks. (laughs) That is until she notices that her wedding ring is still on her finger. So it actually happened. But like, I feel like if I'm like, in a magical world where I slayed a dragon, became a queen, got married, had kids, eventually die. I feel like I've lived a good life. Why do I got to go back to high school? High school. I hated high school. I hated high school. Those fake people. <laughs> I hated them. And I hated high school. So why do I got to go back to high school after I went to this magical world and became a queen? These are questions I have. You're an immortal writer. Okay. (laughs) And every so often you have to change your pen name and writing style just a bit to avoid suspicion. Yeah, I feel like you would have to because people would be like, You sound a lot like this writer from, like, the 1800s. And it's like, maybe I am, maybe I am not. I don't know. Um, At a book signing, a fan brings up one of your books for your signature. Except that it's a piece you wrote 1,200 years ago under a completely different name. Yes! This is what we were trying to avoid. Although, that fan may be immortal, maybe not, we don't know, but like, the the book that she brings up lasted 1,200 years? They're obviously a huge fan because they took very, very good care of that book. But I don't know. Maybe it was like an Ancestors or whatever. But it's like, how did they find out? Like, did you like... Because you were changing it a bit to avoid suspicion? Like, did they put it all together? Like, oh yeah, it could still be the same person. In my head, I'm just like, they met this writer like thousands of years ago and like they're immortal too and they're just like yeah I know what you look like because I've seen you before thousands of years ago that's just my guess but you gotta change it more than a bit apparently because people are putting two and two together (laughs) wife crashes her own funeral horrifying her husband who had paid to have her killed of course he did. <laughs> Although that that would be something. Like to crash your own funeral. She's like everybody's there mourning you. Like they're sad that you're dead. They're going to miss you. You know maybe they're sharing stories. And then you just stroll on in like. <laughs> you just stroll on in at this point. I mean. Yeah, but you're horrifying your husband who had paid to have you killed. My question is, did she know that her husband had paid to have her killed and that's why she did this? 
Or did it just happen to be a coincidence? But also, like, he's just strolling in to the funeral, just like, hey, guys. And everybody just, like, faints because they're like, what is happening? Um, That's how I picture this going. Like, there's a bunch of people just, like, on the ground and the husband's just like, And she's just like, that would be so weird. Like, I can't even imagine, like, going to a funeral for somebody and then they just, like, stroll on in. Like, that is the weirdest thing ever. And I would probably think that I was seeing ghosts, truly. Like, I wouldn't think that they were still alive. I'd just be like, man, I'm really be seeing those ghosts. Um... Because that makes more sense than them being alive. Because why are we having a funeral for somebody who is still alive? I feel like she had to know that her husband paid to have her killed. Like, I feel like this is, like, Snow White. Like, the queen sends the huntsman to go kill Snow White. Spoiler alert for a movie that is... I'm not doing the math, but very old. But... Queen sends the huntsman to go kill Snow White. He's like, she's 14. I'm not killing her. Um, Comes back, lets the queen know, yeah, she's dead. And then meanwhile, she's still alive. Like, I feel like that's the situation. Like, the husband hires this hitman as like, look, I need you to kill my wife. Like, I need you to kill her. And... The assassin goes to kill her. Maybe the assassin falls in love with her. Maybe the wife has a new man. Yeah. And decides, I'm not going to kill her. I'm going to let her know that her husband tried to have her killed. And that she needs to stay hidden in order for this to work out. So she does. And then, time for the funeral. And she's like, I have an idea. I have an idea. And it's going to be fun. Get the cameras ready, because this is going to be fun. That 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 is how I pictured the story going down. But yeah, so that is it for the, I wasn't expecting that, story prompts. Um, let me know which one was your favorite. Let me know if you have any of your own that have their own little twists at the end. Um, I'm really curious to hear everyone's thoughts. Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you want more story prompts. Thank you.